What's up guys? All right, so today we are going to talk about wood desk locks. Now, there's hundreds and hundreds of different styles of desk locks. I am going to focus this video on the round base or the what I call triangular base or diamond base wood desk locks that were frequently used on older desks. And we're going to go over some of the designs of them. Most of the time they're on the center drawer that you pull out that's got your little pins and stuff in there and it works by obviously just turning the key a bar comes up and it holds it from opening sometimes this bar actuated a mechanism within some of those desks that would lock the side drawers as well but almost always these were in the center drawer where your pins are just to keep your pins or whatever else you put in there secure so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about impressioning because i have a few of my guys Ask me about impressioning, so we're actually going to make keys for one of these. We're going to talk about the different keys used. And uh, yeah, let's get started on wood desk locks. So there are, again, as I mentioned, several different styles of these wood desk locks. There are the diamond base, the round base. Every so often you'll have a weirder round base and even square base style. Almost always they use a seven eighths, seven eighths inch hole. Typically they are mounted close to the top of the edge of the desk. And again, when you pull out the small drawer, if it's locked, this will go up into the frame of the desk and keep the drawer from pulling out. It's surface mounted, so the installation of these is very easy. It's just a 7 8 inch hole. Again, pretty close to the edge because there is not a lot of room between the center of the hole and the top edge of it. So they are typically mounted very close. Often you will find the pencil rack behind this if it's in the center of a desk drawer, in the small desk drawer. Often the pencil rack will be blocking access to that because the pencil rack is usually a wood or sometimes plastic mechanism that's just right there at the front of the drawer. But when they attach it in, it is blocking access to that. So if you have one of these that you do need to take out, sometimes you have to pull the drawer out and look up underneath and sometimes you will see the screws holding in driven up into the bottom of the drawer that holds that pencil rack in so if you were to have to take one of these out sometimes you do have to if you don't see a way you don't see the back of it or see the screws typically that's because that pencil rack is covering it up and you have to remove that pencil rack if you have a lost key situation now the most common ones of these were made by national and corbin or ccl Corbins were typically the diamond base style or triangular base style. This one's a CCL. We also have actual Corbin ones, for instance, here. Most of the time, in almost all cases, the Corbin locks were the CO68 or the S1000V keyway. That was typically the most common of them. Of course, they had a few other styles of keys that they used. The national brand almost always was the RO3 key or the 1069N. It was by far the most common keyway. Uh, there were a handful back in, quote, the day, like Eagle made a few of them. Let's see, is this an e actual Eagle brand? And uh, those would use the ea 47 key which is distinguishedly different than everything else and of course yale had their own as well this one i believe is a yale and typically it would use the y11 style key so we are going to pretend like we have a lost key situation and hand impression one of these again a few of my viewers have mentioned that they'd like to see more impressioning videos some of these, once you take them off, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. There are replacement styles available, and these are very inexpensive. So 
sometimes it is easier and quicker if you do have you know one or two on hand or whatever and you are in a hurry and you just want to switch it out if you can see the back of it sometimes it's just more easy to unscrew the two screws and slap a new one in but for instance if you have the pencil drawer in there or it's hard to get out sometimes you just have to impression it make a key for what is already there or if you have multiple of them that they knew was the same key it makes more sense just to make the key for it however if you do want to replace it there are a variety of brands this one is the lsda and we will flip one over here and we'll just see how it works the they come some of them come already assembled some of them come you know sub assembled is what you call it there is a back plate and then the locking bar and the core and the housing is basically the three parts to it when you turn the key it turns the pivot which rotates the bar out and vice versa just turns it back and forth makes it move in and out and almost always the core is held in with a active retainer and sometimes very very rarely are you able to actually pull put something in and pull that retainer down because sometimes you can sometimes you can't i don't know about on this one we can check and see let me go grab a pick it's lsda if we run a pick in and see if we can't pull that retainer down yes you can however some it is completely blocked there's no way to get to that retainer or the retainer has a open bottom which means we need to go to try to do that there is nothing for it to hit so if you have one of these and you say needed to take it out obviously these are sealed these are not really meant to come apart but on the replacement ones that are you would take a sharp object put in there depress that back retainer and your core will slip out like so on a handful of these there were holes in the side and if you turn your key a certain way let's see if we can see in the light here if you turn your key a certain way it will expose that retainer i think that's it right there and you simply push a probe in there and it lets you pull the core now this is somewhat uncommon there are many that do not have that hole. It almost looks like they tried to do a hole, but that is way too far forward. That is just a manufacturing thing, but there is no hole here. Of course, you could always drill one real carefully. However, these are usually five wafer locks. On some of the old Corbin, you had six wafers with a different key or the 1000 V key, which the S 1000 V is five wafer, or the 1000 V is six wafer. So every so often you run across the six wafer, but the large percentage of them are five wafer. The national locks use four depths, as we see on our cards here. These are the two main cards if you use a code machine to make keys. We see the national was a four depth. The Corbin or the CCL is five depth. So, a little bit of difference in the depth and one extra depth as with any wafer locks number one cut is going to be pretty much at the top of the blade progressing deeper and deeper which we'll go over as we are doing the impression so before we get started impressioning one of these to make a key for it obviously if it's on a desk lock you might want to open it prior to and some of our other impressioning and wafer lock videos i've talked about picking it halfway and sight reading it to deduce some of the wafers it makes it a little bit easier to impression. But when you are trying to open one of these, it's only going to turn one way to unlock. And typically when you are doing this, you can feel which way to turn it when you are turning the tension wrench and raking it. But again, with these, and we're going to switch cameras, it sounds like an ambulance is coming, but we're going to switch cameras to get a little bit closer view inside of this. But we can see that first cut there is pretty deep on this particular one. However, before you do any of that, most 
locksmiths have that ring of keys that's the c346 c413 c415 there were quite a large number of these desk locks that were matched up with cam locks as well that were these keys so always take your 346 413 415 especially on the ones that are national obviously you can only see this if the desk was locked that's all you would see but check your keys the your common keys just to make sure that it's not already one of those before you start impressioning, always check the back. On some of the older locks, they had a code on the back of them, and you could easily just clip out a key. Wasn't common to find a code on it, but every so often you'll get lucky. Most filing cabinets and desk locks always had that code, you know, on the front of the lock. These were always a little bit different in that they for the most part, didn't have a code. If I can find one with a code here, I will show you. Here we go, here's a CAT 66 by Corbin. That's gonna be one of those S1000V keys. But in this case, you could just look at the bag of lock and cut the key. But we're not doing that, we are impressioning. So let us pick out, we're gonna do a national because it's only four depths. Five depths makes it a little bit harder, a little bit more tricky. But uh, let's just get this one. This one doesn't have a key. This is going to be the RO3 key. You can pretty easily just get a lock once you get the lock in your hand. If you uh, have no access hole to pull the retainer out. If you just take it and do that and just break it off, you can easily just slip the core out and uh, then you're screwed. No, I'm just joking. This was already, this was already broken. I was just want to freak y'all out. Anyway, let's go impression this one. And to do that, we're gonna have to first sight read it. So let me grab my pick and turn it. See what kind of uh, wafer bidding we have here. Where are we? Let's see, it probably turns this way. Again, four depths. Not really that big of a deal. Let's see how well we can see these wafers to sight read it. Oh, no. That first wafer is kind of deep. Definitely helps having a silver wafer there to see it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this off camera. You probably will not be able to see what I see, but that first wafer we're gonna guess is definitely a two or a three, I would probably take a guess and say a two because it's about halfway down or three maybe because it's about halfway down the cylinder if i angle it up i cannot see if it's held straight i can't see number two wafer but i can see the third wafer in there it's also silver you see the gap you can see that third wafer then you can, if you angle it really sharply, you can see the number two behind number one wafer. So 212 or 313 is definitely what that is. And again, you probably won't be able to tell on camera, but that fourth wafer hiding behind number three looks to me like it may be the same height. Almost looks like a brass wafer there. So, 212 or 313, and then possibly two or three for four, and I definitely cannot see the fifth wafer back there. But we have a pretty good idea that this is 212 or 313 based on that wafer, which, you know, it's a good idea to learn this because it does help with your impressioning. And uh, let's go get started doing that. So there's a handful of ways to impression locks. I'm gonna show you one of the easiest ways that I learned a long time ago to do this. And of course you're gonna need vice grips or an impressioning tool, but you do have to prepare the key blank first. And instead of this flat top that is already on key blanks, we're gonna put a edge on it, like a knife or a chisel edge per se, not a double angle but we are doing a single angle just like a chisel would be so put your 
key held in a pair of vice grips or your tool on a firm surface at a angle and then you're going to start without affecting the shoulder being pretty careful not to go down because you don't want to lower the height of the key blank but we want to put basically a chisel edge and it be pretty sharp and as we are turning the key while we're impressioning that will let us see the marks a lot better now the finished key once you get the cuts and get it turning you do not want to give the customer the key with this angled edge so you are going to have to duplicate your impression key or code cut it once you discover what the cuts are this is one way to do it just with a hand file typically if you're in the field this would probably be the easiest way to do it and we're going to get it down to just about sharp and if we hold it up to the camera we can see what i'm talking about there just one side sharpened to the point now the other way to do this is a little bit quicker a little bit more dangerous but it can be done this way thing that you never ever ever do is lubricate the lock prior to impressioning because that can give you all types of false readings but we have our prepared blank we're going to turn the plug back to either locked or unlocked so you can insert the key and we are going to go ahead and clamp up our impressioning tool or vice grips and when you are impressioning you have to turn kind of hard and even though the key only turns one way, we're going to turn it both ways because it will give us a little bit more marks. Um, and if you're doing this on a you know fragile like plexiglass or something where you feel like it'd be a bad idea to put a lot of pressure this way, you don't want to rip the mounts out of anything. So you definitely want to make sure your surface is good and sturdy to be able to do this. So sometimes it is definitely a good idea to take it out of its mount to do this part. Okay, I turned it back and forth a few times and we're gonna rock it a little bit, rock it up and down while I'm turning it. And hopefully that will give us some of the spacing. Let's assume you don't know or have the spacing on it. I'm gonna switch over to magnification here. All right, taking a look at our blade under magnification. We see that first cut that was definitely a two or three, marked really well. If we come down here, we see a four. You're only going to file what you see. You want to be careful not to cut what would be called a false mark, but we definitely got a good mark on number one wafer there and uh, number four wafer there. So we're going to go ahead and take this down one depth even though we think it's a three we're just going to go down just a few strokes of your file and our other mark was right there so we're going to take it down to what would be pretty much considered the number two depth so two at now we have two one one two one and let's see what that does. Again, just turn and rock, turn and rock, turn and rock, turn and rock. Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit more here. Turn and rock, 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 turn
turn, 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 rock, rock, turn, rock, turn, rock. And now we zoom in to a magnified. So we have a definite, looks like, Something going on. Where's my pick? Where's my pick? There it is. Whoa. Definitely have a mark. We angle the camera a bit. We can see that right there is marking. So we're going to want to file that down. Still really don't have anything going on with two and three. If we look at four. We see a little shiny spot at certain points. It's not really visible everywhere, so you want to kind of rotate your view. By rotate your view, I mean just turn your key back and forth. And we can definitely see it marking in that four spot right about there. It looks like we got something going on on the tip here, but we're not going to do anything with that until we don't see any marks at one and four. So it looks like we have about three one one three one now. Let's give it a go. Oh, hey, we got a turn. It's a little stiff though. It's got a little catch to it, but it's good that we turn. We know we're pretty much dead on there. And as we're turning it, it feels really tight. So hopefully that mark is, is marking down into the key. this point we should get some really good marks somewhere on the key to tell us what we're missing and we'll go back to mag okay we're gonna zoom back in here we see a wonderful little mark right there that's where that wafer is pressing in once we turned it the wafer is just denting in the brass right there so we need to go a bit deeper Probably not a full depth. You don't want to go real deep, but you want to go knock down this just a bit. And we're forward of where we've been filing, so we were just a bit off on the spacing, but that's okay. We still don't have anything in two and three, so this may very well end up being three, one, one, three, one, because we have nothing there. So since it was turning and only a little tight, we're just going to take this number one cut down and see what happens and we're gonna we're gonna push forward a little bit instead of filing in the channel that i've already created i'm gonna go forward just a bit because again my spacing was kind of wonky there okay make sure we don't have a, a vertical edge and uh, yeah, didn't go down very far at all. Shouldn't have to. Smooth as silk. So we are three, one, one, possibly three. I don't know, let's see if we can figure out what it is. Three, one, one, two. Three, one, one, three, one. But unclamp your impressioning tool and try it with your hand just to make sure it's working okay it's very smooth so we are good with three one one three one and to verify that i am of course again you don't want to give this key to the customer because it's thinned down but if you just put this in a duplicator and duplicate it it typically it will be fine and then just discard this key you build the scrap keys under the price of it but we're going to run over to the duplicator we're going to do uh, or the code machine we're going to cut 31131 and see what happens just to show you that it can be we're going to code cut it card 37 we're going to try that 31131 see what happens
one's not really a cut, but there is our code cut version of our impression key. We'll bring it over here and see how it works out. There it goes. So, 31113. Looks good to go. Again, you can use the Y11 or the R03, but again, don't give the customer this key unless you're in dire straits. But, you know, it's not a good idea because this sharp edge will cause a little bit more wear and cause it to drop down more. So, guys, that is my little deal on wood desk locks. If y'all have any questions, comments about wood desk locks or impressioning in general feel free to leave them in the comments i will be doing more videos on impressioning since again some of my subscribers have asked for that so yes that is uh, you can apply what i just did to practically any wafer lock out there um, putting that angle on the edge of it makes it a lot easier for the marks to impression I know some might ask about pen tumbler locks, but I don't impression pen locks like Quickset Wiser. Certain automotive like old Ford, five cuts were pens. That would be technically a pen lock impressioning, but it kind of works on the same principle as a wafer. So again, if y'all have any questions or comments on wood desk locks in general or impressioning, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks again for watching guys. We will catch y'all next video.